back to the channel, everybody. Today is the day. That. <laughs> uh, I did spend probably an hour and a half off screen just placing blocks up. So in theory, I didn't get all the way to zero G, but it's like within 10. It's like 0.10 G, I think, up there. Um, but I did take a break to design us a nanobot slash weld ship. Um, I made it in another world and blueprinted it, so that'll be our first objective here. Let's get that guy built. And then, uh, yeah. And we'll start cranking it out, I think. Ah, no, 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 no. Please don't build this right here. <laughs> this is not where this is going. Grr, hold on. Hold on. All of you nanobots. All of you are off. And stay off. That is the problem, I guess, is uh, <laughs> leaving those guys on is they will they will do what they're supposed to. They really didn't make a good place to connect this guy. Um, who I know will go on top like a little hanger. This is a terrible idea, but you know, it is what it is. It's gonna take forever to line up too. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Now, we just turn these guys on. And we wait. Man, this is so great. I'm going to go heal myself since I almost got murdered there. Dang, that's two uh, death-related buzzwords I've used today. Hopefully that's not a problem. I don't remember if you remember that conversation where I was like, huh, I wonder if I should be saying unalived and all that stuff, but I think we're good. We'll find out. this within the shield still? Haha, <laughs> barely. <laughs> I don't think that ember will come at us, but if anyone does, I want this to be ready. Well, that's welding up still. Oh, actually. Might be just missing some components now, but... Oh, not 2,000. 200. <laughs> anyway, it's like I was saying, we're going to need to connect this guy up, so uh, I am... Is this sagging? No, it just looks like it. Okay. We're good. I'm going to connect this up with a... Uh, to our conveyor here. So that we can uh, start getting it fueled up. Sweet. Okay, now that's connected. This guy should start getting some fuel. Oh. Well, that's why. <laughs> there we go. Sweet. Alright, let me take you on a tour of this uh, monstrosity. Actually, let me make sure this is filling it's not okay we're stockpiling we'll do it the old-fashioned way and there you go I'm sure there's some sort of rule in space engineers about can't put gas in cargo containers or something so it has to only go straight to a tank but 
Anyways. Well, we'll stockpile that, because... Frankly, we have got plenty. Not plenty, but enough there. Um, to fill this up. Okay, so yeah, brief tour of this guy. Uh, cargo, large cargo container, because we're going to need it. Uh, you know, I was going to say thrusters in every direction, but these bottom ones might not be quite as sufficient as I'd like them to. We might. Yeah, it's built. Just a little... A little side extra two. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. It's the color picker. Hold on, let me grab it. Alright, that's it. Everything's going black now. They lost their color privileges. Okay. This tank is full, perfect. And immediately starts draining. That's not the desired behavior. Okay, we'll leave it on stockpile for now then. And, uh, oh yeah. Gotta get these thrusters in still. Alright, so. The idea is here. Large cargo container, large hydrogen tank. We've got four build and repair uh, terminals. And we've got uh, three front welders. This is uh, just in case, because I'm seeing some weirdness up there where the build and repairs would do all the components except for motors. I didn't understand that, but um, it was something I noticed, so I figured I'd mention it. Uh, two batteries, which isn't a ton, but uh, we do have a, a hydrogen engine here, and then three... O2H2 generators. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I was kind of going for small, yet functional. Um, if there's anything I don't like about it, it's just these spaces underneath for these components, but they're just kind of large components to begin with, so not much you can do there. Uh, but that being said, yeah, I just kind of want the batteries to charge up, and then uh, should be good. I can't find this... Uh, can't find this cargo container because it thinks it's part of the ship here at the moment. Oh, well. Yeah, it's it's connected on the bottom, so we're good. You know, I probably should have made this a covered cockpit. Just to save on oxygen and hydrogen and all the good stuff. Which we still can't. Let's do that. I think it, the industrial one actually has a... Ah, uh, but it's a top mount only? That's okay. That's worth it. I'll put a connector there. <laughs> okay. Technically uglier, I would say. Uh, but quite a bit cooler. Yeah, I like that. That fits the aesthetic. I'm going for more. Not that there's much aesthetic on this thingy, but... Okay, so what we need is this cargo container. And I'm going to rename it to Nanobot Repair Cargo. Okay. And then... Interior plates. Got 2,000 there. 100 there. Yeah, 5,000 of those. So that's good. So it's really just interior plates and probably construction components that we'll run out of first. So, but yeah, actually, we're going to do this. We're going to turn on repeat mode. And then we're just going to do conveyor pipe. Boom. All right. Now we're printing conveyor pipes. This guy should almost be ready. Yep, in a minute. While we're at it, I'm gonna take out you. And we're just gonna add a connector on the bottom. Ooh, and actually, how much, how much, how full is this? Not full at all, really. We're getting ice. Oh, we lost Lorca. Well, Archer. Hope you're smarter than he was. Because if you die, I'm probably not going to respawn you. <laughs> okay. Batteries are charged. Cargo container is full. I think we're good. There's a small moment of truth here. Not really, I guess. 
we'll leave that there in case we do need to connect to anything in the future. Plus, those are all resources that we need in here. So, pop all that in there. May as well. Alright, I always get nervous at this part for some reason, but here we go. Info. Rename you to the Nanobot Repair Platform. Because why not make it super long and complicated and convert to ship? Oh, crap. Well, did you see that? <laughs> We are not exactly holding our own. Ah. Okay. Well, we're floating. I think. <laughs> not for long. We need more thruster power. So. Yeesh. Make sure those. Oh, it's because the tank is on. It's on stockpile. Oh, I'm so dumb. Oh, I was like, how are we going to rip off some of those to add more down or up thrust? Ah. Oh. Well, that was almost catastrophic. <laughs> Thank goodness for the water mod. We're going to just set this down to 4,000. Okay. Now, let's go to our groups. We're going to have this toggle block on and off. We're going to have this guy toggle block on and off. This guy toggle block on and off. We're going to put the tank in, probably at number 9 here, and stockpile on and off. Enough dilly-dallying. Let's get on the road. And by the road, I mean, yes, this. We have gotten quite a bit of progress here, actually. I did move this up a few times, so look at that. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. I'm so lazy, and it's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I love this. This is everything. I well... To be fair, this welded up everything except for the motors. But still, it is everything I wanted to be and more. Glorious. I wonder how far we can go. Let's make sure it gets those bottom ones. It did. Oh, it maybe did. <laughs> maybe. There we go. And you know what I forgot to bring is... Uh, Stuff for those cargo containers, actually. I just have conveyor materials. But it should be fine. This is some next level space engineering for me. I uh, I normally don't bother trying to figure things out and just kind of do it the hard way. And I'm, I'm loving this. All right, we've run out of our first thing. What do you think it is? Motors. <laughs> I'm actually surprised we had a good chunk of motors. I'm going to leave this, like, right here, and then, uh... Oh! I don't even have to go back down to the base! I mean, I can't access it from here still, but... I don't have to... I could go down here... Oh, lads. I think I've... I think I've won Space Engineers. I am... I'm the winner. <laughs> oh, this is so nice. I'm out here still doing things manually, but it's fine. What I should really do... Oh, no. My only connector's on the bottom. If I made a side connector somewhere, it would have been great for, for connecting it up to the elevator and then going from there. Yep, so we're low on... <laughs> we're low on a lot of things, actually. I need to get those... Uh, Pretty much all the refineries churning out stuff. In fact, or the assemblers. Man, I'm mixing those up today. In fact, rather than doing this, we're, because there's four components and I have four assemblers, we're just going to dedicate them. So, 
Assembler champions, you're doing interior plates. Probably crank out 10,000 of those. Assembler number two, you are doing construction components. 10,000 of those. Assembler number three, you're doing small steel tubes. 10,000 of you, and last but not least, industrial assembler four, you are doing motors. And we'll probably do like 3,000. Well, I don't want to make too many, but also motors are a pretty useful thing to have, so. Now really wanting to figure out, oh, we could attach it here and then come off the side. Okay, we're doing it. So I'm grabbing you. Well, I'll put back 50 of you just so it'll actually weld it up for us. I don't know how viable this is gonna be, but we're gonna try it. And then one of you, gotta have steel plates, which is why I brought a couple. <laughs> Boom. And then we're gonna have one down here too. Let's descend. <laughs> we're making it uglier and uglier, but it also works, so I don't wanna hear it. And you know what's so great about this too? It'll refuel my hydrogen, my batteries, and give me things. Ah, this is glorious. I think with that connected, they should be able to get it, but I guess not. All right, now we go to the assemblers. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. <laughs> I'm gonna move all this to the end, actually. <laughs> Lads, we are doing it. We are building a space elevator, and it's not actually stupid. It's dumb, but it's not stupid, because it works. Oh, wait, I'm gonna grab that connector. Hee <laughs> hee. And we'll just keep that on our inventory so we don't accidentally use it. And up we go. Uh oh. What the heck happened? Excuse me? That is bad. That is bad. How did I not notice that? Please. Please connect. What do you guys think? Is it connected? All right, well, <laughs> I knew things were going too splendidly. I need I need that to weld up immediately so we can see if it is connected. Oh, please, 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 please. Okay, that is. We won't know until we hit that cargo container, but I hope so. Man, I hope so. I should probably fix the color too. <laughs> All right. Small crisis averted. Hopefully. We will know once we get to that next level. I have no idea how that happened. Someone took pot shots at it, I guess. Very irritated about that though. All right, we have reached the cargo container. So I am going to get that welded up now since like I said we didn't bring the components for that and please 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 turn green when I connect you it did woohoo all right gents now the crisis is truly gone up we continue unless we're out oh no there it goes I just glitched or lagged or something uh oh why are we on uh slow mode who's done this why am i taking damage oh that thruster there <laughs> hmm it's like the game knows i shouldn't be playing it this way and so it's fighting me like look at this why is it yeah we're it's like we're on, oh we're we are on stockpile 
I don't I didn't even push nine. I might <laughs> I've taken that off. <laughs> Remove. Yep. Well, we'll put that on page two. I should not accidentally be turning that on ever. That is catastrophic. It's a good thing I have three H2 generators on here. Okay, we're at a motor, so it's time to build that uh, connector again. Oof. Grabs a little strongly, but it's all good. Right, now back to our assemblers where we grab. Uh oh. Oh. Two motors. La da 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 da. There we go. Okay, assembler one's finished, assemblers two finished, assemblers three finished, assemblers four is working. We're gonna need 10,000 more easy. Uh, yep, let's get them all started again. Okay, interior plates. And then for this one, we've got a ton of these, so I'm just gonna do like eight or 6,000. <laughs> so we'll unlock you. Knock you out. And continue onward. And if I was smart, I would have got some one of the assemblers to make cargo containers. But I'm not smart. Or am I? <laughs> Look at this beast. I'm so lazy, it's delightful. Is it, If it's just grids that it's missing, usually... We'll find out. Because if it's grids, I can just grab a huge stack of grids and be good for the rest of time. But... Oh yeah, it's displays and grids. I think I can handle that. Okay. You're not doing the building thing. Oh, there it goes. In fact, let's go. Oh no! I knew I should have healed myself. <laughs> All right, well, everything should be fine up there without me. Um, I'm gonna wait for my body to return to the surface. Unless it got stuck up there somehow. This is a bad idea. Very bad. I don't know where my body went. Interesting. Either just burned up in the atmosphere or s something. Um, I must return though. <laughs> I need to uh, get a bottle and... Oh no, my tools. That's okay. If anyone wants to redesign that ship up there, I would suggest putting a survival kit. All right, we're blasting off again. With only slightly, a slight delay. While we're here, I guess we'll grab grids and displays. So I'm gonna need some more displays. Not a thousand. I don't know if anyone's ever used a thousand displays. That seems absurd. No, oh, and I'm full, cool. Okay, we can now finish up the uh, Cargo containers, too. This is one of the most beautiful things I've ever done in my life. I've peaked. It's glorious. And plus, not to even discount how great it was with that bot, or the nanobots building up blueprints. That is absolutely the way I'm going to be doing it from now on. I'm done with welding walls and whatnot. I'm going to build a room of, uh, of these bots. Okay, run out of something here. I could check this way oh motors who could have seen that coming all right i'm going down here gonna grab a stack of motors and then our when we reach our next cargo container we will connect it up all right do i have any steel plates i think i lost it all when i died oh did it collect my body? I know they can do that. I don't think so. Collected something though, which is nice. Oh man, Tana. I need to 
be able to turn that off and on in a moment's notice. That parallax reminded me of that. It's harder than it looks connecting these. Okay, cool. So now, you know the drill. Assembler. Oh. Oh, it did. It totally collected my bodies. I don't. I don't even know what to do with that information now. That's wild. Uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need more interior plates for sure. We're gonna need everything. 10,000. We'll do it in chunks of 10,000 so that it doesn't feel like a... Like I'm just willy-nilly wasting resources. Actually, how are we... Yeah, we are drowning in tubes. I'm leaving those. We're gonna have two doing motors. Because those are the ones we keep running out of. Alright, that's enough for now. Get rid of you. I was trying to remember why I wanted to build these cargo containers like I did, but I'm so glad that I figured it out. It's because the green, if it's just a long stretch of tubes, if one of them is misaligned, you don't know where. And if you like halfway up accidentally like click it above the stack and it just kind of quickly drops into place, it'll look like it's connected and you'll have no way of knowing where it is. But if you break it up every now and again with cargo containers or even if you want to, you know, be cheaper, you could do uh, <laughs> just conveyors um, or conveyor junctions. But, yeah, just something to break it up so that it has an excuse for the lights on it to turn green to confirm that you are making a good seal and everything is good. Um, the nice thing about cargo containers, well, no, that's, I was going to say, you could put turrets on them and they'd have inventories. But then I realized, well, you can do that with <laughs> conveyor junctions, too, so guess there's no no reason to do the cargo containers except for I ended up doing it. So I guess originally the idea was probably going to be as I'm hand welding it that I don't have to go all the way back down. But um, <laughs> who needs hand welding, am I right? <laughs> Something kind of underrated or understated, I should say, about this the way of doing things is how fast it burns through resources. But you could calculate the uh, resources per second that are getting cranked out of here. It's a lot. And so I keeping those assemblers going full time is important. Look at that. Perfect. Ran out of something. Probably motors. Right at the perfect time. I even lined that one up pretty well. We don't have enough uh, interior plates though. So that's going to be fun we had a good supply I thought when we started but we've burned them out pretty good it's okay it's one of the key components of these blocks so I'll let it slide I didn't even notice the progress we made we're at 0.57 gravity we're almost halfway when I said we complete this uh, this project today I was sort of not thinking that would actually happen uh, but it looks like it just very well might except for I'm pretty sure I didn't go all the way up still so there might be some building that has to take place as well ew you know with my hands getting out of my ship and placing it manually woe is me <laughs> I was worried I would need these welders on the front so that's why I added them just in case but I think we can all agree I did not it's nice to have those as an option uh oh Parallax, who are you yelling at? Oh, a dangerous encounter. Cool. As long as that stays over there, I'm okay with it. Let's pause this here and grab uh, another supply of supplies. Oh, almost fell. It's fine. We are officially in a no oxygen or heat environment. Exciting. Okay, now we unlock. And we rise to the occasion. So now that we've got this system kind of down and in place, I think I don't need to really narrate it a bunch. Um, so what should we talk about? Well, that game, The Crew, is now officially gone. Just gone forever. Because uh, Ubisoft decided they didn't want to keep the servers running. So that's a game of experiences and uh, memories and a story that will never be played again it's just kind of sad it's hard to take things seriously like oh we're losing video game history which i think i've mentioned this before but it's like 
yeah, <laughs> we are. And it seems that it's hard to make anybody else care that doesn't understand, that doesn't, yeah, hasn't lost the memories like that before. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of think there's there's a need for a little bit of uh, oversight onto these video game companies that are just kind of doing less than the bare minimum. A lot of people are saying, oh yeah, we need offline patches, and I agree. I think one way to solve this would be eliminate online only. I don't, I don't see any reason that that should be a requirement for a product purchasing, or I don't see how that could be allowed. I think the fastest way to do that is that no games can be created without sufficient offline functionality. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. I think this is an issue that is going to affect us all. Um, even space engineers. Like, I don't have a physical disc of space engineers. My computer doesn't even have a disc tray in it. Um, so if one day Steam, you know, <laughs> if Steam just disappeared, I, my library is gone. All the games I ever bought can't be downloaded anymore, which is, yeah, kind of bad. I'm not gonna lie. Not very consumer friendly. I don't think Steam will ever go anywhere. Um, I don't think I I need to be quoted on that, though. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I guess we just kind of we kind of need to be watching out for this industry. Obviously, it's kind of in a crappy place at the moment. Microtransactions out the wazoo and companies hiring and discarding uh, workers at will. But there's a lot that, you know, that should be talked about that's not. And, again, it all comes back to at least... In my house growing up, there was kind of a stigma against video games, um, which, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's, it is what it was. Um, <laughs> but I don't think, I think that needs to be kind of gotten over with across the board. Um, if there are any other families that, you know, scoff when they hear, oh, video games, or laugh at people that, you know, watch streamers or all the stuff that's associated with gaming. And then, you know, our movie cinephiles and, uh, you know, watch all the sports games on TV. It's like, okay, you're, we're, we're pretty similar here. We both have these passions that are just expressed differently. You prefer to consume and I prefer to participate in my media. Don't get the same enjoyment out of watching a movie as I do playing a video game. But they are ways that people unwind. So I think I'm probably ranting now at this point, but I don't know. There's some, some real issues in the world that need to be solved. Um, and then there's also this issue, which is a real issue and does need to be solved. But <laughs> I'm not saying do solve these issues at the expense of others, but just, I guess, raising awareness is all I can do. Uh, I don't have a place in government or anything like that, nor do I really want to. All I want to do is build this space elevator, which we are at 0.44 gravity now and still chugging along. I think I've added 10,000 of each to an assembler like four or five times now. We might, this project might be like a 100,000 interior plate project, which is insane. Because I, I could never imagine like going to an assembler and saying, okay, I need 100,000 interior plates, please. <laughs> Unless it was a massive accident where I fell asleep on the keyboard until it added enough. Um, <laughs> Oh, we just ran out of quite a few things. Oh, no, just just construction components. There's, there's like lag when I click. It takes, does it take, does it, do items physically travel through these conveyors? <laughs> I've never had latency I'm dealing with that before. In fact, I'm actually going to pause this right here and I'm going to go change it today because nighttime just opens up the opportunity for more um, more accidents and we definitely don't need that <laughs> all right welcome back to the day let's return to the stars and by the stars I mean the upper atmosphere at the moment <laughs> but we'll get to the stars one day oh that's another thing I could put build and repair bots on these Carter containers and then you just kind of have passive healing at all times um, I was actually thinking of a doing something different 
AI, making an AI ship that goes up and down elevator at all times, just kind of up and down, and then it's got uh, nanobots on it. That way you don't have to, you know, program something as delicate as welding. You can just have it something follow a path that's like, you know, five or six meters away from the t from the elevator and just go down it and then let that automatically do anything. Uh, problem is it would be charging. <laughs> I don't... I, I have not ex experienced with much of the AI stuff. I think I built like a boat or a boat. <laughs> I built a ship and then uh, added, you know, AI offensive to it and let it go do its thing or AI move. Very bottom of the barrel AI stuff, especially in this game. Okay, I think we're good now. Let's uh, proceed. Oh, what did I just turn off? Oh, I turned on the welders. Nope. Kick. Break you. And continue. Yeah, we're over halfway. 41 grams of gra grams. 41.41 uh, G. I recently started a new, a new, uh, a new playthrough of Elden Ring in anticipation for the DLC that's coming out in a couple months. I don't know how much overlap Space Engineers and Elden Ring has as far as communities go, but um, that is definitely one of the games. I was gonna say one of the games of all time. Uh, it's it's a, it's a pretty good one. Um, I don't think the industry has seen a game like that in a while. It's just so it's a huge open world, and it's full of stuff. Like not an Ubisoft open world where it's like, oh, there's collectibles. Go get the collectibles. Spend 10 hours doing that so we can pad our play time. It's like, oh, I'm on my fourth playthrough and I just found a dungeon that I'd never even seen or heard about before. And now I'm experiencing this for the first time. And not only that, it's so big that, oh, I totally forgot about this dungeon. And I could have never played it before. Or maybe I've played it many times and... I don't know. There's well-crafted open worlds are something else. I feel like a lot of times open world gets a bad rep because there are so many bad ones. My f probably top three open worlds, one of them would be um, Cyberpunks as well, Night City. But even that one is, I mean, it's awesome. It's got so many varied locations and lots of interesting things to discover. But it's still an open world, you know, <laughs> which is fine. But it, yeah, it's something that's kind of lost with a lot of games. Is they kind of just, they give open worlds a bad name. Now the lore of Elden Ring, that is as nonsensical as it, get, as it gets. Uh, George R. R. Martin is a crackhead. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he does not scratch any itches for me, that's for sure. His lore in Elden Ring is uh, atrocious. Not atrocious. It makes sense. It's very elegant and cool, but it's... Or uh, elegance, the wrong word. But it's 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 just wild. I don't know how you can even think up this the sort of things in there. Uh, I watched the first episode of Game of Thrones and I got filtered. Um, <laughs> that was a disgusting uh, series, just episode to watch. So I already had pretty low opinion of <laughs> George R. R. Martin. I'm a diehard Tolkien fan. I love Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Silmarillion. It's amazing. And I even, I think I read the entire, you know, Chronicles of Narnia, all the, uh, all the books in that, which totally different than the movies. If you haven't, if you haven't read the books, it's a totally different adventure. Um, there's a lot of people <laughs> involved that aren't in the movies. Kind of like World War Z. Uh, if you didn't know, there's a book, World War Z, um, that is just... Each chapter is a completely new story from a new perspective with new people, yada, yada, yada. Um, oh, computers. But yeah, so the movie World War Z follows, you know, Brad Pitt's character and his family making it their way through the apocalypse. But the charm of the World War Z book is how each chapter is something different, new story. And so you get you get to experience a ton of different people in different backgrounds like there's um i think a like a retired old samurai one living in japan and then there's 
uh, society of people that just like got giant barge ships together out in the middle of the, in the uh, Indonesia, like around Indonesia or in the Pacific Ocean. Just a bunch of cool stuff like that. That stories that you wouldn't get told in a movie format because movies really work best when it's following <laughs> characters, the same ones throughout the whole thing. Anyways, I am rambling endlessly here, but I'm also mildly bored out of my mind because, you know, I mean, I don't get sick of watching this. This is just stunning. I think I'm going to have a hard time building any other way now. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, kind of rambling, enjoying Elden Ring. Um, if you want to see any Elden Ring content, let me know. I know it's not, it's very different from the channel. Um, I do kind of want to do other things besides Space Engineers, uh, at least for a while. I'll do Space Engineers for sure, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that we're, you and, you and I, you the viewer, <laughs> I'm talking to you. I hope we're building a relationship, a rapport that's interesting enough for you to want to see my perspective on multiple stuff. I don't want it to just be like, oh, yep, that's my space engineers guy who uh, does fun space engineering things. <laughs> Wants to be like, oh, that's Josh. His content, you know, puts a smile on my face. I'm glad I watch his videos, no matter what they are. Not no matter what. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say that like, oh yeah, you better, better watch my content unconditionally. But you know, just be like, oh, I like that guy. He put out a new video. Let's watch it. And then the second thing you think about is, oh, what's it about? If that's not a reasonable expectation or hope for a channel, I get it. I understand. But, I, you know, not trying to be like every other channel that gets locked into their niche and finds way to either reinvent themselves or steal from other creators so that they can't grow. I just kind of want to come on, do my own thing and build a community that I like to hang out with. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I'm trying to get to the next cargo container because we are out of resources. But uh, I think as I was building, I started to uh, left uh, more and more room between cargo containers. So got stuck with, uh, uh oh, they stole my construction components. Anyways, I don't remember what I was talking about, but it wasn't important, no doubt. Oh yeah, I think just the, what I kind of want to foster in the community. We hit that 500 subscribers recently, which was awesome. I'm so glad that uh, enough people are coming around and hope you stick around. Like I said, we're, we do fun space engineer things here for now. <laughs> what gravity are we at? We are at 32 Gs, 0.32 G. <laughs> we are like getting disgustingly close to <laughs> finishing. That being said, we're probably gonna need another 10,000 of everything still, so yeah. That's an excessive amount. I'm glad we had the resources for this project. <laughs> I know I like went out of my way to make sure we did, but still, I never suspected that we would be just pounding this tower out as we are. And yeah, this is technically faster than doing a vanilla, just because we're welding up four blocks at a time, which you could make a huge stack of welders and just go kind of straight up, but at least in the way I would typically build ships, which is like this, welding ships, that is, um, this is much more efficient. I could have fit more on, but I, had <laughs> more on. I could have fit more of these nanobots on, but I didn't want it to become absurdly heavy or, you know, a pain to manage. And this is, this feels reasonable. Building four blocks a second, basically, is pretty reasonable. I don't need to absolutely destroy the balance of the game just for just for my own enjoyment, you know? Plus, it's giving me time to talk with you guys, so I'm glad to do it. And someone asked me in the last episode what the plan is for the top of this guy. Obviously, it's going to be a well-defended luxury space station. I say that. Not obvious, but <laughs> that's the plan currently. Um, we'll do that... Well defended, obviously, because I have so many hostile encounter mods on this <laughs> world that's delightful. I got Parallax, I got Incon, I got Reavers, I've got the Traders. Don't forget those Traders, man. Those deals they give me, criminal. <laughs> Though they did give me Uranium, which I, I can't knock. That's very appreciated. 
So yeah, the luxury space station. I'm going to have most lots of turrets. Um, leave most of the industry down on Hurricane Station. That way we can. I'll have still like a couple. Like I think I'll have hydro. Oh, yep. We done ran out of something. Um, hydrogen engines and stuff up. Yeah, you can see my gaps between cargo containers got huge. Uh, but yeah, we'll have hydrogen engines and hydrogen tanks and stuff just to have backup power on the station in case worse comes to worse and the space elevator gets severed. But yeah, all uh, assembling and refining will be done down on Hurricane Station for sure. I don't want any of that polluting the luxury side of the station. So we'll have tons of like rooms, maybe gratuitous gratuitous rooms does that make sense do you guys understand that uh <laughs> just rooms that are don't serve much purpose but will be served to make the station nice all right let's see what we ran out of uh construction components who would have thought should i take a break here just to let uh let the assemblers churn stuff out for us yeah we're at 0.29 gravity how great is that almost to space i think once we get to space i'll maybe I'll turn this into kind of a dedicated repair and tugboat, and we'll get rid of these front welders and add um, those like gravity panels or whatever that stick to things, stick to ships, and we'll use that as like a little tugboat. I don't think I will actually move anything around with it, but it'll be nice to have the option. And there's a starting base over there. <laughs> Yeah, well, it said something was spawning, but beats me if I know where it is. Okay, let's grab stuff from the assemblers again, and then let's continue onward. long stretch we got we're at 0.23 gravity but yeah we've we've run out of resources for there so let's return to our last cargo container which is pretty far down here oh now there's a dangerous reaver encounter too was that the one that was already there i thought it was a parallax one Ugh. i have a feeling we're angering the uh <laughs> the spawn gods with our monument. We'll keep chugging along. <sighs> Let's take a break and let some things weld up down there. Not weld, but, you know, assemble. Ugh. I am tired of building this, not gonna lie. And I'm doing this the easiest way possible. 
Well, I suppose an easier way would be creative mode and just placing it directly fully built up, but... You know, I somehow don't think, uh, don't think that would be enjoyable. Plus, I don't think that'd fly with you guys. I would hope you guys would hold me to a higher standard than that anyway, so... I see other creators sometimes hop into creative mode, and I'm just like, really? It's a, sur it's, it's a survival game. If you're gonna play in, in survival, or if you're gonna play, <laughs> play in creative mode, may as well just play the whole thing in creative mode. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with that. It's just the back and forth that's a little, a little morally wrong for me. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Because if I'm, you know, using it to spawn in a blueprint or something, what's to stop me from using it to spawn in uranium? Or, you know, remember we had a full two or three episode arc trying to find uranium, and then I finally got it by selling a ship for tons of money. Speaking of, can we see our balance anywhere? Oh yeah, probably have to go to ours. Yeah. I had a ton, and I'm still 7 million credits. So to me, that's more enjoyable than just being like, we really need uranium, so whoop, here's, here's a ton of uranium. Don't worry, it's uranium ore, so that we can, you know, still smelt, they're still refined it, and it's like, no. Nope, nope, that doesn't, that doesn't work for me. They call me the Rambler. Yeah, I'm the Rambler. I go and on and on and on and on and on. Did you guys see the Tales of the Empire trailer that came out? Everyone's hoping for Tales of the Sith, but, I mean, Tales of the Empire scratches that itch for me just fine. Tales of the Jedi was just a great six-episode solid chunk of Star Wars for me. The TV shows have always been better Star Wars than the movies to me, which definitely a controversial <laughs> take for sure. Uh, growing up, I was a Star Trek fan, and at least where I grew up, the Star Wars fans were not very, uh, shall we say, uh, accepting of the Star Trek fans. So <laughs> there was always like, oh, you're into Star Trek? I hate Star Trek. It's like, okay, have you ever seen it? No. All right, then. <laughs> So my way of, you know, countering that would be to say, oh, well, I hate Star Wars because Star Trek is so superior, you know. Um, and at the time, all I had really seen was the movies. So at the time, <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Star, Star Wars is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> and then uh, during COVID, I watched uh, Clone Wars, the TV show. And that's uh, probably the best Star Wars media ever produced. Um <laughs> that is fantastic um, it fleshes out all the characters of the prequels and makes it makes those movies enjoyable again um, and then I watched Rebels which got a had a bad uh, rep from what I hear when it was airing but man that's they, the finale of season 2 is top 5 moments in all of Star Wars um and some of the scenes in the final season, also top five or top ten. Uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn, every scene he's in, top 50 scenes <laughs> of, of Star Wars. So, yeah, it's just like, man, there's, there is so much good Star Wars out there. But it is, uh, it is not the mainstream stuff, lo and behold. What actually made me willing to watch... The Clone Wars was Mandalorian. I watched Mandalorian and I was like, oh, why, hello there. You are amazing. <laughs> and this is Star Wars? Okay. Well, let's see what else there is. And Clone Wars was kind of the obvious go to after that. Alright, let's get another connector up and get our ship connected because that's what's next. The footage on this episode is just going to be the most boring stuff you've ever seen, so I apologize. It's just rinse and repeat these days. Um, <laughs> but hey, uh, this is going to set us up for the rest of the series, basically. I was kind of finding it hard to leave the planet of Typhoon because it's just a giant sea of ice unlimited energy 
And so now that we can take that with us, well, there's no real reason to not leave. Well, <laughs> okay, that's not 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 what that was not my intention, to, but it's uh you know awesome awesome to uh, be able to have power issues not be a concern. Gravity we at? We're at 0.18 gravity. We are getting there. I feel like these last like 20 gravity always is the longest and I am not okay with it. <laughs> Let's make sure all these are set up good. Okay, we might actually well, no, I, I can't even say for sure if we're, if we're actually getting to the end, toward the end of needing resources. Because we just might not be. I'm going to leave the motors there. There's no way we need 17,000 motors to finish this project. I'm trying to find different angles to show you. But there, uh... <laughs> There's only so many ways I can show sparks of light poofing conveyors into existence. Try this angle now. Turn off signals. The signals are super useful, but they also can kind of get everything clouded up on the HUD, which can be not fun. Except for you don't know if you're being assaulted. Yeah, we're gonna run out of cargo. Can do these mostly take construction components? Yeah, they do. That is the biggest. All right, we're actually gonna go to. Which one do we have too many of? Not too many of, but enough of. Probably tubes. So let's go to our tube assembler, and we're gonna set it to do construction as well. And do that first, because I think we, next, I don't think we'll make it to our next cargo, but we'll try it out. All right, that's a good chunk. Onward, once more. Once more into the breach, my friends. 0.15 gravity. We're closed in. I don't think I went all the way up to 0G. But if I did, that'd be great. Okay, there's no way I don't need to stop, do I? Yeah, okay. We only got a thousand cargo containers, cargo construction components. Gosh, why do I, why do I do that? There's no cargo in that word. Construction components. There's not even an A, or a G, or an R. Construction components, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. I think doubling up on the construction components was the way to go. Eventually we'll run out of tubes too, but you know what? Construction components are actually universally useful, useful while uh, small steel tubes are pretty niche in their uses. So I will take excess construction components over excess tubes any day of the week. Yeah, because of how rare my cargo containers have gotten, I'm going to double check every time. I reach one. Yep. And for good reason. We need a lot. A lot of components to get this tower built. I think that's the top there. Which isn't out of gravity yet, but it will be. Alright, I want to see how close we are. Answer is not close enough. We've done a lot of progress. Let's don't get me wrong. But there's still so much to do. And that wasn't even at zero G. Alright. Well I'm going to pause here today for today 
Uh, I am going to continue recording tomorrow. I just need a break from this. Very monotonous, very boring. Got two hours of recording so far. I'm going to pause this here, uh, pick it up tomorrow, which will be just a split second for you. So, see you in a second. Alright, welcome back. <laughs> We're making progress a day later. I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. <laughs> Seems, uh... I, I never, I don't get tired of watching it, you know, weld stuff up, but I don't know. Yesterday's video being two hours long already, or this video you're currently watching, plus whatever I record today, I'm worried this is going to be a behemoth, but I don't think I was talking all that much, so hopefully there's quite a bit we can cut out. <laughs> In fact, I should probably stop talking now uh, <laughs> so that we can cut out a lot of this. Quick update for you. We're now at the uh, 10 G's mark. 10 G? Point 10 G? Sorry. <laughs> Was bad at that yesterday. I'm bad at that today. Uh, <laughs> should be closing in on the finish line at some point, hopefully. Um, at least the first finish line. the Where I got to finish line. And then we'll uh, build up the last little bit. And then we're going to call that an episode... Um, but yeah, that's still a ways to go. Don't know if I'm just going to time-lapse this whole episode or what, but um, either way, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. I'll, it's good to good to have some people interested and, you know, we're, we're making progress on this behemoth. Um, I will not be building this again, unless it's on a moon or something, and even then, probably not. Space elevators are a burden to build. But man, the rewards are premium. Especially with this one. It's an infinite energy glitch. <laughs> We're at so low gravity now, I can turn off my dampeners and just do a single pulse. Actually, yeah. Let's let that all the production catch up here. And then what we'll do is we will go finish up the framework while all this kind of refines or constructs and that way we can be good to go or we'll get a good stockpile of resources and we'll get everything you need oh yeah look we are darn close that's great all right point seven gravity time to go all the way up to zero gravity okay what the heck I've been placing for like three minutes now and it's still 0.7. Really? Yeah, it's like these last levels of P gravity are like actually the worst. <sighs> oh, that's right. Actually, it just goes to 0.5 and then drops. So I think we're, we're basically there. I forgot about that. Poof. Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Everything's fine. Oh, I'm pretty sure I'm at the edge and I ran out of interior plates. Uh. I must finish this before I run out of energy. Come on! We did it! We are in zero G! All right. There it is. The framework is done. That is quite a lot still to go, but also not an impossible amount. Just a basically impossible amount. <laughs> Though I can't discount what we've done so far. Oh my gosh, where is the bottom? Where is my ship? There it is. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. All right. Let's get everything moved over. Let's actually check the assemblers, make sure they're still doing stuff. They are. So I'm gonna load them up because we, yeah, we're we're not done yet, unfortunately. We'll be able to go a while with this stockpile, but we're still just getting started. 
I think I'm gonna regret making this all in one episode, but you guys have been saying you want longer ones, so here you go. I'm just not gonna enjoy editing this. That's kind of why I started doing shorter and shorter episodes, because I like to, to have a same day turnaround. I record, I edit, I export, I upload, and then schedule it basically. But I like to I like to do that all in one day, and to have these. Two, this is probably the first video actually that's taken more than two days to produce that I remember I could be wrong but it's yeah it's a big one but yeah I agree with the comments they're like hey <laughs> building a space elevator is very boring to watch and I agree so we're knocking out one uh, one episode and I'm gonna stop talking now so that this can go faster for you guys <laughs> Right, that was a nice long stretch. Uh, yeah, we're at 0. 0.6 gravity, so we're almost there. Um, so I hope I filled up the assemblers for the last time. Oh, wait, I haven't connected it yet. <laughs> I just builded it up. Oh no. We run out of cargo supplies? We ran out of grids? All right. Got to do a run back down to our last one to grab some grids. Sweet. All right. On the lay. It'll be funny. So if I got wiped out by... It. Oh. Ah, thought those were meteors. Uh, nice thing about the space elevator is it's a one block wide, one block long tower. <laughs> so the odds of getting hit by a meteor is basically basically impossible, but not not impossible. I will I will admit. All right, this will get us our next little stint. Uh, away we go. We are at 0.5 gravity, so the end should be near. There it is. Victory is almost mine. We've done it. We have reached the top. Zero G, baby. I will float away forever. Okay, well, on that note, Thank you guys for tuning in for this episode that'll surely be super long. Um, <laughs> next episode, we are going to start cranking out a fully-fledged base up here. Um, a nice luxury station for building ships and highly defended because no doubt uh, this, <laughs> this monstrosity will have attracted the eye of many an enemy. Um, so we must be ready to face them. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.